And I just want to say uh, from me and behalf of the PvP community, really, really happy that you're here and you have an opportunity to sit down or we have an opportunity to kind of sit down and uh, ask you some questions. I'm really excited about it. So thank here you. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, man. Absolutely. All right. Well, I mean, we can kind of just jump into it. We got about an hour here. The first thing, um, I mean, kind of the major change we, or not change, but one of the major updates, I guess we're getting in 9.1 is uh, kind of an overhaul of the PVP talents. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is something it hasn't happened Thank in a God. while, like little tweaks here and there, but this is like they quite a significant overhaul. Like and I wanted to ask if uh, you guys had any like specific theme in mind or like a goal uh, when updating these talents? Um, like, uh, was there any like specific goal you guys had? Yeah, for sure. There were there were a couple goals, right? Like when we we added PvP talents back in Legion, and the story there was a bit of like there were a lot of buttons in the game, and we wanted to reduce them. But there was a lot of things that were really important to PvP. There was a lot of like mechanics that were uh, worked well in PvP, but not necessarily PVE. And we yeah, felt like reflect. those abilities needed a place to live. Okay. Um, we were also building a progression system at the time, um, but. In general, we feel like there are, like, PvP is a very different game from PvE in the sense that there are things that matter a lot more in terms of like positioning, area oh, denial, yeah. like counterplay of certain buffs, debuffs, that there's a cool design space there that we can work with with PvP talents um, that, you know, we can kind of seclude from the rest of the game. So we don't have to, we can go wild a little bit in the PvP design space. Our PvP talent design space, and so what we're our goal here was to kind of freshen that up because, as you know, you know, in, in PvP in arena, in order for the game to feel fresh, like the meta has to change pretty mm -hmm. yeah. importantly, and, and in order for that to happen, classes have to change to some degree, mm -hmm. and that happens like on an expansion flip, you know, seven oh eight oh nine oh they come out. And you, you know, can't we have change the meta abilities. every we expansion. Soul binds, Azerite traits That's go away. So slow. Uh, essences go away. Um, all those things. What do you mean? Then all of a sudden, the meta is very different, like an expansion launch. So things feel fresh uh, for a, for a while. Um, it feels like we got to figure out what's strong, what's not strong. People got to play years. around it, and and so that feels like fresh content for like the arena player, and even in some ways for the uh, for the the battleground player. But now we come to like a dot one patch. And that is mostly like that amount of radical change that you see in expansion is, is it's over, it's done, right? And so we feel like this is a good time to now circle back and do a big PvP talent change. And we have a couple, you know, goals there. Um, okay. We, you know, for one thing, we want to kind of just change things up um, and make people have new toys. Okay. new pieces of the puzzle meta puzzle to kind of figure out that's good yeah um, that's but also the meta it's a chance itself. for us to like you know this system is a system that choice is an important part i mean i often see people say like give yeah. me a fourth uh slot right and oh yeah part part of this is we want three slots right uh we want these choices to be important adding three more buttons to your bar can be a, a lot of headspace for people you know take up a lot of brain space for people um and so we want those choices to be compelling and so we want to address things like talents They're that are passives interesting, half talents the time. that feel mandatory, it does, it's not even talents three more that, buttons. Um, you know, are doing too well, and we need to you know figure out uh, a better way to handle it. So that's kind of what our goal was: was to to, to shake things up a bit, uh, provide new abilities, new spells, new content, essentially for like your arena or battleground player, um, and to try to address uh, issues mm -hmm. as much as we could, like balance issues as much as we could. Uh, yeah, uh, I like that. I like the idea that there's not like a single honor talent that is like you're going to be locking in every single time. And honestly, looking at the PvP it talents, it, it feels like uh, 9.1 could be like more meta defining and change things up even more than like going into Shadowlands, which, uh, you know, I'm really excited about. That's good. Yeah, I agree with yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, and for what it's worth, it took, um, you know, this was a, a I, I know sometimes people are like, what is PvP getting? And it's tough when you look in the lens of a class, and there are 12 classes, there are 36 specs, and if you primarily focus on one of those, you 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 You're may feel like lot. this one spec didn't get that much. But you have to think of like the amount of work we do kind of gets multiplied by 12 or 36. And we had uh, we put a lot of time and effort into to making these PVP talents and refreshing them. It um, sounds like you know, an engineered problem. People were working on them over the, the last patch cycle, so 
it, it is i'm glad to hear that it feels like yeah this is going to be you like know the, yeah. a radical change uh, oh definitely and the game will feel different um because that was certainly one of the things we were going for Cool. Yeah. Also, uh, one of uh, just to kind of uh, finish up with PvP talents. Uh, yeah. Another theme that I kind of noticed was um, a lot of healing reduction was added. Mm -hmm. We even saw like healing reduction for some healers. I believe druids uh, with what? their cyclone. They have a way to reduce healing, and shamans the with their fuck? unleash shield. Um, oh yeah, if you're so, good at too. I, like I, I'm pretty yeah. sure, like almost. I don't want to say all specs, but a significant number of specs actually have healing reduction now. What what was kind of the uh, the purpose or the goal of adding that? Um, yeah, I, I think to fuck you largely. To obviously, it's to fuck you make the game Duh. more offensive and less defensive. Um, I think in general the game plays better. <laughs> I would say in general games play better uh, when offensive strategies are the dominant strategies. I agree um, with that. That's a very people, good mindset. Uh, you know, like we reward aggression. Um, and very happy at times, to see that. Uh, you know, healing can be too strong like we 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 want a world where i agree um, with that you know you're in a 3v3 and the healer uh he you know yeah. he or she yeah that's good um great is mindset. kind of playing goaltender almost right a against mm -hmm. the other team like trying trying to stop uh kill windows and whatnot but over time uh they wear down um and and that's kind of what these are built uh, these a lot of these talents are built towards it's just Bringing, you know, the increasing the pressure on healers a little bit, um, and Good. making Fuck them, them um, uh, you know, in increasing the, you know, effect of sustained damage on them, uh, so that they feel like, uh, you know, people are going to die like in, a, in a pretty good amount of time. Cool. I would say, you know, our, our targets, uh, our rough targets for an arena match, like a threes, would be somewhere in the three to seven, you know, range, three to seven minute range. I like um, that. That's a good time. We burn. see that generally, you know, in lower ratings, things, you know, below 2000 or even quite honestly, as high as uh, 2200 or 2400, like the games are not super long. I know we all watch esports, and we see the AWC and we see the very best players in the world who are very good at shutting each other down. And sometimes those matches can go a bit longer. Yeah, um, we've had gladiator matches that last know, like one for, minute the matches to be somewhere in the three to five uh, minute range so yeah he's this, right about that this is kind of an effort towards that okay cool uh, i definitely have a, a few more questions about uh those topics, matches. um in yeah, a little bit keep going uh, okay we can actually oh. just dive into that right now if you want so whatever um, whatever yeah no, let's do that um we might as well while we're on the topic so uh I, ha I have one of the things um so i sent out a tweet i'm sure you saw it um asking kind of the community the things that they wanted to discuss and talk about um mm -hmm. and kind of on the topic of uh healing um i, I in shadowlands it uh, off healing seems like it's the highest it's it's really ever been. So you know, there's a, there's a few outliers. Actually, there's quite a few outliers. Like Word of Glory example for retribution paladins. I don't want a retribution paladins or hybrids to think I'm picking on them because you know may just have like Triune Berry, which is also really really good. But, yeah, Triune Berry um, is insane. There's, there's a lot of heals in the game that can bring someone from basically like 20 percent to 100 percent really rapidly, and in a lot and of cases they don't have a, a large cost on them. And things like this can really act to like kind of prolong the game. Is there, is there any, um, is there any thoughts about kind of uh, looking at some of those things, like these defensive abilities and heals that uh, can quickly turn around a game from non-healing classes? Yes, I think I think there's a bit of a balance uh, that we have to, a line we have to toe of mm -hmm. like one off healing feeling like a cool and powerful utility that you bring to your teammates, right? Yeah, um, and two if like a hybrid spec relies on those healing spells as part of their defensive kit yeah those are some things we have to keep in mind but yeah certainly acknowledge that like um when you know you're able to lock down the the uh healer and then the off you know the, the dps you don't have crowd control starts bombing some huge heals that shuts the whole kill window down like, yeah it's weird that's a problem so, it, yeah, yeah the hybrid we, can just heal as good as the healer over the next uh, few weeks um we talked about off um off healing and uh we've trained it in so yep that is definitely something we're working at and definitely something i'm concerned about i think in general like i said i'm glad they, they think um, that's bad and I, <laughs> yeah that's good i just say it to uh, the team all the time like people got to die yeah um, <laughs> People got to die in arena. People got to die in BG. All right. We, we would rather yeah. be in a world that's, good. that's too lethal than not lethal enough. So um, perfect. That's we're going to continue to keep trying to yeah. drive the game. 
towards the lethality and towards people dying. Thank so, God. Um, you know, spells on healers, spells on off, mm-hmm. uh, on uh, hybrids, all that is something we're going to keep looking at. Cool. Uh, I'm really excited Good to mindset. hear that. And it, kind of on that topic, uh, once again, since I feel like we're discussing this, I might, I might as well just ask you right now. Um, another, another kind of thing um, we, we, we saw, I, I believe we started seeing it in Battle for Azeroth primarily. Um, and then it, it's happened in Shadowlands quite a bit as well. It's like the idea of these really low risk, high reward payoffs. So a lot of like passive defensive cooldowns that you know come in the form of Not conduits, um, or they come in the form of um, your covenant abilities um, or covenant traits, and these things that can keep you alive. And I think the reason people get frustrated by them um, is because there's essentially no counterplay to them. So mm-hmm. like when you are going for those kill windows, you are going for those burst windows. You know, you'll you'll see a druid um, just automatically use frenzied regeneration, and the healing is really powerful for things like that and frictionless yeah. coding. And I, in nine point one, they're actually yeah, it's annoying. It, it seems like uh, a bunch more of these are being added. Do you feel like the addition of even more of these is going to kind of undermine the goal of uh, the games being faster? Yeah, I'm definitely worried about that. And I, I think I should also address for the hybrid healing I th- and for this problem that you're talking about now. It's good he's really, honest. I'm um, glad he's just honest about mostly it. Mostly lean on uh, malting them down. So, you know, making PvP yeah. specific uh, reductions to them okay. um, that really only apply in PvP. And yeah, we just, we're going to do a pass on that. We're kind of in the stages we'll right see now. See what happens. Where, um, it's the best idea. Uh, where we're kind of shifting our attention more towards tuning. Um, as the tuning is things we can do uh, later in the patch cycle. Uh, so, yep, that is definitely something I want to, like you mentioned Triune Ward. Um, that was the one I know that was... Uh, yeah, know, Triune's really insane, man. Enough, uh, mage barriers. I want to uh, kill past, mages. Uh, season. Uh, but yeah, a lot of the soul binds. It, what, it was easier in um, BFA because we had this kind of whole tier of passive healing traits and so it was very easy yeah. for us to like blanket say oh with like hey, the all these traits tier. are reduced by like yeah he's right about that because we just want the damage to go up it's like the absorb um, and shields and i shit. feel like even though it wasn't well spelled out in game like to have this knowledge that in general this tier is reduced in pvp was Sorry. good uh, and a lot easier it's harder with the soul binds because now we're talking about uh and even some conduits or some legendaries because it's so there's a little bit of cherry picking here. Like there's a little bit of, you know, hit oh, this one, his. hit that one, not this one, and and so that's kind of what my concern is. So yeah. we'll, <laughs> that's we'll, it. I thought um, it was mine. We'll be talking about them, going over the ones that are the most problematic, and and doing uh, a PPP multi pass on them. Cool. Uh, I mean that that all sounds awesome. So, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for talking to us uh, about that one. And yeah, okay. uh, I'm definitely. I know you've done it in the past where you multiply the ones that are, you know, the particular offenders down. So uh, yeah, I think yeah, that yeah. could uh, definitely help. Um, but the, the next thing uh, I wanted to talk to you about, which is probably uh, the, the number one request, uh, was uh, gearing. And actually, yeah. gearing, uh, we'll talk about kind of the beginning of Shadowlands. So gearing in Shadowlands, there was a lot of improvements uh, in my Absolutely. mind over Battle for Azeroth. Huge so improvements. So the fact that the honor vendor came in, uh, as well as the conquest vendor, and kind of giving PvPers control uh, over the gear that they were getting. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like, uh, for the yeah. most part, at least at the beginning of the expansion, uh, at the expansion, uh, that worked out really well. Um, were you guys happy with how uh, it ended up doing? Yeah, I think, um, and, and you know, as this conversation continue, goes, uh, you know, I would I would say, yeah, I think um, the prob- the the current solution works really well for the start of the season when everybody is kind of growing at Absolutely. the same rate, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's no catch up. Getting their conquest gear. That's the uh, problem. Kind of, you know, a piece or two uh, at a time each week, and um, you know, upgrading them that power differential is not so significant. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, you know, I, I think, and, and I, I, as we even maybe discuss the downsides of the current system, like, I think one thing we always want to reinforce is that, you know, PvP is not, a, is not an island, right? Like, it's a part of the broader <laughs> RPG that is World of Warcraft. True. And as such... You know, when we design a gearing system for PvP, we, we also have to keep in mind what is going on for the rest of the game. Yeah. Um, create 
things you know uh, that attract uh, players to PvP that aren't where PvP isn't necessarily their um, primary focus, yeah. but you know offers some things that seem attractive to them. Um, so yeah, I, I was I think we we yeah I think that's a good idea that has a lot of potential and um, uh, you know I, I yeah I'm happy uh, I'm to glad have about return that. to a world where. People are kind of hanging around the vendor, whether it be the honor vendor or the mm -hmm. conquest vendor, um, and then um, kind of you know going queuing up for a battleground or arena, getting their points, buying their gear, you know, going to the vendor, left shift clicking on all of it to see what the set looks like. Those are all things I remember doing for a long time, and I'm, I'm glad that uh, we returned to it. Then make make new Great. sets, right? The recolors, sure. man. Just gonna turn you up a little bit. It's yeah, if, if you want, um, but yeah, I 100% agree. Uh, the PvP vendor has been really, really great so far. Um, yeah. And it, it's like you kind of said at the start of the expansion, it felt really, really good. Like basically, your experience was you slowly acquired your honor gear until like you were capped on renown. And then as you slowly gained renown over like the weeks and months, you were able to upgrade that gear slowly. And it was it was a very gradual process, and it felt very fluid. Um, but I, I think that the big difficulty players have is once Alts. people are geared, if you're like a new player coming yeah. into PvP, There's no that's when up. like this mountain kind of seems uh, insurmountable where you have to get your honor gear and rank it up, you know, seven times, which is uh, quite a bit of honor and get your conquest gear and use honor to upgrade that. Um, I, I, people are kind of wondering if there's any um, intention or thought about adding like more catch up um, to gearing later on in the season. So yeah. like if you are they someone who's playing alt to do this. or you're coming into the season a little bit later, you could catch up uh, your gear a bit faster and be on more of an even playing field. Um, yeah, so some things to think about or there I, I want to put out there. So one, sure. um, like I totally, uh, I totally agree that this is a problem. Um, you know, if you're someone coming in the middle season or even like let's say this point of the season, yeah. and you're like butting up against uh, the next rating tier, it can feel difficult to you know beat that team who uh, is fully decked out in conquest gear that has Absolutely. been upgraded and is six item levels higher than you. Um, that can be a significant like uh, thing to overcome. Um, however, I do think there is value in this item level chase like this idea i agree with of, that i want to hit the next tier because yeah the honor gear is, uh, i think there's value in the, it too gear upgrade i agree with them gear uh i can improve it it can be better uh it can be higher um so we like that idea but acknowledge that like yeah m mid to late season it's really tough as an alt to try and overcome that that gap um, and that's a problem. Since I think that's primarily a mid-season, late-season problem, mm -hmm. um, we weren't able to prioritize addressing it right for 9-1 launch, but it's going to be uh, a goal for us like in the, the mid-patch, like a, a 9-1-5 patch or something. And our initial thoughts are to do um, more tiers, um, kind of more steps, um, because as I said, I think six item levels could be a lot to overcome, but perhaps three is not so bad. Okay. Um, so if the uh, upgrade tiers were more along the lines of three and perhaps the honor was adjusted accordingly. Okay. I don't <laughs> think that would matter. Was just accordingly. Yeah, I'm because it's about people, the max uh, versus the minimum. <laughs> <grind. versus laughs> um, you know, yeah, thank goodness. Then, then it, it, it would hurt a little bit less. But yeah, like early season, I've it's got the same you know, thing. Two, that guy's got two pieces of conquest gear. I've got two pieces of conquest gear. It's six item levels higher. I don't think those two pieces are, you know, super make or break. Um, no, no. Uh, yes, Less they have the an weapon. advantage. Uh, that's part of it. That's part of the the RP, RPG PvP that we're playing here. But I agree um, with that. I don't necessarily think uh, like at three item levels that, uh, later in the season that would be too hard to overcome. No. Now, in terms of just rates of like conquest acquisition and honor acquisition, um, yeah, that's something we'll have to look at. I, I'm on one hand um, like. The the fact that the cap, I mean, I, you you remember the days when there was no catch up cap, right? Remember, it, there was it used to just be like you're earning two thousand conquest a week, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, you know, you miss a week, you're a week, you're kind that of that used to suck. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it can be pretty nice to just have this gigantic conquest bar that you can work through right now uh, and gain that gear pretty it's quickly. Like, it's, it's hard I to overcome that, though. Like, yeah, you feel like you're at a competitive disadvantage. 
Um, Absolutely. We, we look at that. We were, we were exploring some ideas about like a little bit of a, an amp for your conquest earned. I think the thing is I would never want to make it such that, uh, oh, hey, instead of having to earn 27,000 con- conquests, you only have to earn 13,000 conquests, you know, to outfit yourself. I just think that is a little bit too much, but perhaps getting you started, uh, we could find some ways to get you started a little uh, easier uh, later in the season. Um, but again, I don't want to, I don't think it's, you know, smart for us to totally undercut the, the power progression of, of characters um, in, in, in such a way. Um, Just inc- uh, I, increase I conquest no acquisition. feel like they have to earn the gear on the characters and those characters progress and become more powerful uh, from playing the game. Like that's just kind of one of the under, underpinnings of uh, yeah. playing a game like this. Yeah, definitely. I, I, you're, you're right. I, I remember the early days uh, where, you know, if you fell behind, you, you basically you had to go over. through the subsequent yeah. weeks to catch up. But I also remember the days of... Uh, I think it was a warlords where there there was like um, there was ways to get conquest quicker, mm-hmm. like tokens you could buy from players on the auction house, stuff like oh, that. So yeah. if you were really behind, that you know you could put resources into that. that. I wonder if uh, almost something like game, like a bonus conquest weekend or something like that, like similar to how yeah. you see the honor, uh, could help um, on the, like those long grinds. Yeah, I think so. I think I think I think those are those are some good ideas. Yeah, if the if the um, PvP bonus weekends again, gave I, conquest, I hope, that'd be awesome. I think we can do that some sort of thing more in like a nine one five. That's a really good uh, idea. Nine one because I think the problem will be more prevalent at that point yeah. uh, than it is. Yeah, like, that, that'd be know, badass. When launches. I don't think anyone's gonna have this concern so much. It's just a very big concern, like in this last month or two, uh, as the season has been longer uh, than intended. That, yes, uh, players it sure has. Way. Yeah, I think a, a lot of uh, a lot of the kind of frustrations around gearing kind of stem from people just getting into it as well, and how Absolutely. how big of a difference in your power there is. So if you're you know someone who's just starting out, let's say you got your full honor set, you're you know mm-hmm. 197, maybe a little bit higher from your legendary, yeah, and you like jump into arenas and you're kind of trying to climb to that first hurdle, um, that 1400, you can mm-hmm. find yourself in situations where you're playing against you know players that maybe mm-hmm. got their gear from rated battlegrounds and they're mm-hmm. you know full 227 yep. and in situations like that yep. i mean they you know a couple item levels isn't that big of a deal but when it's like you know 30 plus item level difference it almost feels insurmountable for these players totally yeah i i looked into that problem a good uh, amount with our um uh our data scientists to like kind of investigate like how often was this happening like how often were the the people with higher um uh, gear coming down into these lower brackets, and uh, you know, it, it, it definitely seems uh, that our, especially particularly in two v two, our MMR distribution this uh, season was definitely skewed more towards uh, you know sub fifteen hundred ratings than we normally are used to. Um, this is something we're investigating. Um, that's it good. Was that's that's a good answer by just the the number of matches uh, that happened, which was yeah. uh, very high, um, like historically high, uh, largely, I think, motivated by the rewards that were available. Talk about um, boosting. You know, the, the item level of the rewards you could get pe- from PvP were very attractive to pe- people. It was a deterministic way to get some of the gear. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people are participating. So, you know, like kind of when you're saying that there are people who are in this bracket of 1,400 at, at high gear, that was just a general issue that we saw. Okay. Um, and uh, for, especially for 2v2 and 3v3. Um, and so we're, you know, as we go from one season to the other season, we, we renormalize the MMR curve, which is, mm-hmm. uh, I know, sounds very jargony, but um, basically on season ro- rollover, we, we, we shift the, our, our MMR curve back. So people's MMR gets adjusted just so that it's kind of fitting the curve as it should be. So next season we should see uh, a better distribution of ratings and hopefully these situations that you're talking about where like it feels like people at 1400 are really better than uh, they have been in the past uh, that hopefully will be addressed um, but yeah I understand yeah it's uh, like because I said, of I boosting think though uh, that's why mid season to you know make this jump from one tier to the other a little less challenging should hopefully address the uh-huh. problem that you're talking about all right, and uh, and then the other thing is yeah, finding ways to have a little bit of uh, conquest catch up that feels good naturally. I just don't 
like I said, once again, broader landscape of the game. Want to ensure that we don't, uh, you know, turn the right way for everybody to gear to uh, do RBGs on RBG weekends and you know, yeah. otherwise, okay. the, all activities are a waste of time. Yep, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe uh, the uh, the addition of like the item level scaling uh, will will kind of help fix that problem as well. You mean uh, the PVP item level? Yeah, PVP item yeah, level scaling right, that's right. being added in 9.1. Well, I just, you keep saying the word scaling and I Oh, don't sorry, want sorry, I know. That's <laughs> a sensitive <laughs> word. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay, well, uh, I won't bring it up again. But um, we, aren't, we aren't adding PV, we aren't adding any item. There's item level, level scaling, scaling. Yeah. they're not hidden. We're just, okay, we're that's just, good. PVP item level on the PVP gear and it increases that's the good. item that's level good. on the PVP gear. I just want to make sure that, that that's clear. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, yeah. I know people. Uh, the word scaling has like you know. It upsets people. Upset people. I, I, exactly. I understand. Exactly. Um, all right. So we, we're actually flying through this. So I uh, flying through time. So I kind of want to address right, some of these okay. other issues. Yes. All right. So the next thing um, I wanted to ask you about was solo queue mm -hmm. and oh, uh, LFG. But we can start with solo queue. Um, oh, this is boy. something Here you know. There was a big movement within the community talking Here about it. Go. They wanted it, or a lot of players wanted it. Um, and we, we didn't go. really. I don't. I don't believe we heard anything back uh, official on the topic. And I was wondering, is this something you guys are still debating? Like, is it being worked on, or is it something that is not really being considered? Um, I would say uh, so. A couple things. One, I've talked about uh, in a previous. Uh, interview that you know was referenced by uh, a stoops video uh, that was very popular uh, i'm glad he show, watches the videos that's uh, awesome my interview with josh actually uh, and i talked about like, that's the good. challenges that we have with uh, solo q arena um so okay, here we go the, the one that really concerns us most is like there are two rogues uh they uh, they both queue up and you know um give me a terrible rogue comp uh rogue warrior a terrible rogue comp uh rogue rogue um i don't know rogue warrior uh, guardian druid okay, that, yeah. that's so a good one, one what do you gets, mean uh, or, or gal gets rogue guardian druid rogue yeah rogue that's guardian a good one <laughs> oh, okay other, i understand i understand the other one gets rmp right okay, and okay. Both equal rating and, and then all of a sudden you're saying like uh well you know this sucks because this wasn't really a true test of our skill. Yeah, it was you know the matchmakers you know screwing up. Yeah, and, and yeah, they're set, set and up so to lose. That that's very different from a game like you know uh, Heroes of the Storm or Overwatch where you can uh -huh. like change heroes on the fly or make adjustments uh, mm -hmm. as you as a player. But in World of Warcraft, you pick your character. That character has a lot of natural synergies with other classes and specs. And so that can be a problem. It can be a problem that I, I, you know, I'm very worried about. And then players like we can do our best mm -hmm. to, you know, try to pick good comps for everybody. But, um, you know, especially as you get up in higher ratings, there are it's less really hard to do that. Natural part He's right of how these systems work. And and so the choices that the matchmaker will have to be made, uh, plus trying to get you in a game quickly, there's a challenge there. Yeah. Okay. So so that is one concern that we if we come up with a rated solo queue system i feel like we have to overcome that i would say i don't think they can we're thinking about it we have some ideas yeah i don't think um, they can uh i'm being rather non-committal here but yep. um if we do have something you know this there's some ideas like we'd like to try out in the brawl system uh mm -hmm. to kind of play out and see that's know, a good idea to works. try it in the brawl system um, okay. so those are some things we're talking about but if we were to do something like this you'd probably see it as a brawl first um, before you would see us like adding it full on into the game, because when when we add a new format into the game, like it's there, you know, it's going to be there for a long time. Yep. Um, so we're we're trying to take our time and, and do something like uh, right here, because uh, you know I get the complaint, uh, I get the con that the idea is like, hey, I want to just play some arenas. I like arenas. It's a fun format. And right now, you know, playing skirmish isn't as uh, rewarding for it one sucks. reason or another. Um, skirmish and, sucks. And so that doesn't feel like an option for me. Um, so I think there's the, the main problem here is I want to get into arenas faster than I'm getting exactly. into arenas now. And yes. know, our hope is by looking at the LFG tool, talking about some of the problems there, which I know you were about to bring up, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, we can hopefully get players into matches quicker we're uh yeah we're, we're certainly genuinely not dismissing the problem 
and we're all genuinely, good, right? genuinely looking for solutions okay. to this issue. I, I just wanted to quickly note on a few or quickly touch on a few things you said. So for solo queue, I, I've heard the kind of the idea of, yeah, sometimes you'll get bad comps and, you know, a particular match won't be favored to you, but, you know, the player that's consistent over time, because roughly speaking, you know, you should have as many good matchups as bad matchups or at least kind of equal to other players. So you'll that's still end true. up seeing players go up in rating. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, the argument that I've heard. And then, yeah, I think for the LFG Some system, uh, the biggest more, thing more you kind of mentioned was being able to do other things while you're listed, including uh, searching for people because mm -hmm. um, you'll, you'll run into situations where like maybe there's a rogue, he wants to play some twos and uh, he, he signs up looking for a mage. And then at the same time, a mage signs up, he's looking to play twos and he's looking for a rogue and they're both kind of just sitting in limbo where they can't find each other because um, right. both of them are listed. Yep, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. That seems like uh, an edge case we should look at. I feel like the existing um, LFG is built that way primarily for flow reasons and uh you know like in terms of i listed a group i go back i've unlisted the group sort of thing yeah um so yeah yeah i i think that's a, a fine uh case uh that's causing that's being problematic that uh we should take a look at and uh try to fix and i know there's a number you know this is a game-wide problem i mean the the group finder i don't think it's exclusive to pvp either. oh it yeah sucks sure. dick. Like, hey i want improvements to the group finder and we acknowledge that and we want to improve it um, the other, you know, like it's a very, very small thing, but I, I would, I would love people to, to give it a shot. We did add um, conquest to the repeatable uh, version of skirmish. Um, oh yeah, I don't. That's no, a good idea. I'm glad about that. Gladiators to like start queuing skirmish. Um, There's not enough. Anything, it's fifteen. But I think for the it's fifteen. Who is you know just likes grinding conquest and um, isn't it fifteen conquest? Um, you know, doesn't always want to wait for an LFG. You know, you can hopefully uh, queue some skirmish and and slowly grind out your 15 once a day or at least you know but 15 a win on your your head conquest cap uh and what you know, you'll get some of that experience i think it will be interesting to see how that plays out for some people if they're just like yo no it's fine oh. you know, i got all these matches and sometimes there was Three. wacky comps um and it wasn't a problem for me but you know and, and to your point about like you know over number of many matches like Ultimately, it'll even out. Um, uh, I agree with you, and I understand that. It has been my experience that uh, applying large numbers to an individual player's experience and saying, yeah, like, yeah I know you didn't have a good roll of the dice uh, for yeah. your comps, but like this other guy over here got lucky, so it all works <laughs> out. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really, feel good. Uh, really hasn't played out so well. That's a really oh, good mindset. Okay, fair there. enough. That's the opposite um, of what, what they did fair in enough. Legion. And yeah, I mean, I, I think players would That's love smart. to see something like that. And yeah, this the conquest on skirmishes is nice too because if people are just spam queuing that, maybe they can find some people to queue up. Um, yeah. Uh, next, this is just a super fast, super, mm -hmm. super fast one because people have. Lightning ask, round now? Yeah, well, not entirely. This is a lightning okay, round. It's like a go. middle of a, the interview lightning round. Uh, cross faction queues, ever a possibility. I think the reason people ask this is they just want like more of a player pool to uh, be yeah, able to find partners. Uh, yeah, I understand that. Um, I think uh, you just, you know, a lot of times too, maybe your friend is just on the other side and he's online on his alliance and you're on the horde and you yeah. want to play with him. Um, and then, so I think we have a constant balance there. Uh, like, to between letting you play with your friends and um, preserving this like alliance horde faction divide. Uh, so yeah, I, you know I think that's it's not just a PvP decision. I think that's a gameway decision. I know it's been talked about uh, in past interviews. Um, it's hard so to know what I to do with have that. Really, to add to that. Okay. Um, today, other than I, you know, just glancing at the top of the ladder, it's it feels like it's not all one color. Oh yeah, uh, right not, now. Yeah, which for is sure. Nice. Um, so I think that's at least a, apparently he yeah we have been in, in he doesn't do raids <laughs> yeah no uh, yeah there, there's a pretty even spot yeah. at the top there's no doubt about it I he think yeah like raids. I said the only reason people ask is they just want more people to queue with but obviously oh. at this point it's a uh, yeah it, it's a it's a hard sell with the horde and the alliance but mm -hmm. um. Yeah, the next thing I want to talk to you about was um, rewards okay. in brackets outside of 3v3. So for a long period of time, 3v3 yeah. has kind of been like the, it's, the it's been standard. the, uh, you know, the most prestigious of um, mm -hmm. all the things you can queue for rated content. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, things like 2v2, it had like the rank one title removed from it. Um, yep. And then RBGs 
Uh, that, nothing. Uh, really, they Except do have some rewards, the but they're not title. necessarily uh, unique rewards. Has there been any thought to maybe adding uh, more reasons for people to you know queue these other brackets and really care about pushing this is a good rating question. on them? Yeah. So uh, a couple things. One, two v two, very popular, uh, most popular bracket. Yeah, it's uh, easier by far. Um, I think some people really enjoy it and they enjoy playing it and and at the highest cool. level of competition. I would not want to add or like named gladiator to that bracket um but i think it could get its own it just hasn't been a priority for us to come up with like uh, a top of the why if it's the most two, popular two thing reward, but, okay why um, not i think that could be fair uh you know and it's also just a thing that it's like here is something that benefits how many people. what uh we just it hasn't been a priority for us um but yeah it's, it's totally worthwhile i just would not want to use named gladiator for them okay um RBGs, uh, I, I, this may spook from some fan of RBGs. First of all, I love, I love Rated Battlegrounds. Some of my fondest memories. Yeah, no, um, you don't. Playing uh, Rated Battlegrounds. No, group. dude. Um, I, I, no. Years jumped into YOLO RBG groups just to play some RBGs that are a little bit more serious. Um, no. Than Rated Battlegrounds. Uh, so I really. He's about to spook them, man. Um, I feel like we can do better than what we have now like pre okay. 10 man group queuing and lining up against another pre-made 10 man group and playing a 15 to 20 minute match that is has proven to be a very tough um system to get high participation in to get high um um accurate ratings okay um because, you know, just think about it, a 2v2 match that um, at low levels, uh, you know, may go on for like most three to five minutes. Um, take, yeah, RBGs take uh, 20. You know, take your 10v10 and it goes, you, you take, you know, 10 people out of the pool and they uh -huh. go for 15, 20 minutes. There's just a huge number, order of magnitude less matches in 10v10. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's, it's been a problem. And I don't necessarily think like, oh, the thing that will really help is if we put some rewards at the highest end of rbgs like that's what's gonna get more participation in rbgs like <laughs> i don't really think that's true okay um, ultimately what is proven to increase the number of people doing rbgs better rewards rbgs are a very efficient and effective way to earn conquest and and, and conquest gear liking cataclysm um, and honor um, absolutely so he's right that, that is uh long in the way but i just i feel like you know the, the thing I think we're not the crowd we're not servicing is the people who uh, want to do battlegrounds they like battlegrounds they moved on from random battlegrounds but finding a 10 man group is hard for them yeah um, and so I think we can do better and and that's kind of what our um, our eyes are set on is doing better uh, on that that's good you know, you know as, as much as saying what if we started fresh with rated battlegrounds what would we do what would how would we design this knowing what we know now? Um, okay. I know people threw out like 6v6 RBGs, like just reduced the player count. Um, done a lot of experiments uh, personally with uh, 6v6 RBGs. We've it done doesn't matter. Events with 6v6 RBGs, like it needs its own content. I'm pretty confident about that. Like, yeah, its own maps and stuff. I yeah, like you can't like 6v6 on like a lot of those maps is not that. 6v6 in Deepwind um, Gorge but, would suck. So I think it needs its own format, its own game mode. It'd be and, terrible. So there's a lot of content to be made there. And if we did do something like that, I would prefer we outright replace 10v10 with 6v6 than um, add an additional bracket. Because adding an mm -hmm. additional bracket to our rated system is just puts more pressure on like, <clears throat> which, you know, one more bucket, one less yeah. group of players in the other brackets. Okay. Um, and oh, hey, we've got to balance out like all these things, uh, rewarding evenly. So I don't think that's a great idea. So really, um, I would say taking uh, a big long look at RBGs uh, for the future because uh, I love them. I love the format. Uh, I love, um, but but I think we can do better than than what we have now. Okay. And I I don't like I said I, I don't think that like adding a name title to the top of the RBG ladder is the solution. So I no sinister that. grand marshal or sinister high sinister warlord. Sinister grand marshal, uh, that'd be wasn't, badass. Wasn't no plans on that right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, um, all right. So uh, moving on from that, uh, I want to kind of go down to some of these uh, like topics people were really asking about. So boosting. Um, 
Let's talk about uh, the season one of Shadowlands. So when mm -hmm. Shadowlands first came out, uh, you, you already said it. Participation was at an all-time high. And I mean, everyone that was playing felt it. Like you were just getting instant arena yeah. games. Everybody wanted to queue up. Rated Battlegrounds, gear. 2v2, of course. 3v3. People were reaching were like fast. MMR cap within like the first mm -hmm. month, which I think is, it's, uh, it's unheard of. I don't think we've ever seen that before. But as the season progressed, uh, and especially when we got to 9.05, it felt like the activity on the ladder um, went down uh, significantly and it was harder to find games and the queue times were longer and it was incredibly difficult at the uh, just speaking for like the high the, the highest ratings and even at the lowest ratings as well it felt like it was really difficult to actually climb uh, rating and actually like mm -hmm. push ranks and rating um, do you guys have you guys talked about like any ways you could maybe you know fix that so like later on in the season there's still reasons for people to want to queue and participate and people yeah, sitting I mean, rating, I think, basically. Uh, one of the, the queerest answer here is not have the season go this long. Okay. Um, yeah. We uh, he's right. want. Um, yeah. This is longer than we intended for there to be, you know, 9 0, 9 0 5 uh, to 9 1. This is something we're, you know, working very hard. People are really trying to get 9 1 out as fast as possible. But I think that's an important part of it. Um, and so just, just in general, like. Yeah, no, he, he's important. right about that. You know what we would want it wouldn't have been a problem if the season today. was as long as it should be um so that's the first thing the second thing is i i you know i've i've been here for a lot of pvp seasons and generally like we see like every season plays out in in certain phases like season launches everybody's like gearing up mm -hmm. for the first like 10 weeks 12 weeks or so yeah uh, and and that can be all very exciting and you're getting gear and then everybody's got their gear and things kind of settle in the kind of this state um, for a while and then end of season comes around like the last month or so and then it's like okay we've got a rally uh, like try to acquire you know the the rating you wanted for this season yeah and, and things pick up so my mm -hmm. expectation is that uh, we will see things pick up here like when we start to say like hey it's getting close to the end of the season um, you know there's gonna the cues will pick up a bit um, and then you know we'll see in the next uh, patch that will go um, I think we can be more aggressive with our inflation um, numbers um, for for next season than we are right now. That's that a good idea. Some higher ratings than yeah. uh, towards the end of the season than people are accustomed to seeing. Five thousand um, rating in general that will put more pressure on people to uh, play more frequently okay. if they want to preserve their spot on the ladder. Um, I generally don't like the idea of decay. Uh, I don't either. Decay. I know that's been thrown around by the yeah, community. Yeah, I, I don't like decay either. Um, it, it just kind of, it sucks. I, I don't think that's a great experience that if a player like has to go on a vacation, yeah, or take a break, uh, I'm not a fan of decay two to three weeks and then they come back and they've literally lost ground because the game mm -hmm. is like, no, I've decided to lower your rating. It's a, it's a mentality you know, thing. Of your sick mother. <laughs> it's a mentality. Yeah. Um, I think a world where we reward people for playing, um, you know, more later in the season is better. I think for what it's worth, um, Inflation is too invisible. Uh, it's That's there. True. Um, but I think this is a system we should actually make a visible mechanic in the game. Um, and, and we talked about that. You know, like it, for, for people who aren't aware, you know, there's all of the ratings are built around this middle ground of 1500. And like you're either, you know, Above way or below that. better than 1500 or you're way worse than 1500. But 1500 yeah. is kind of the middle. And what we do is we move that middle over the course of the season, uh, currently at a rate of about 10 uh, rating per week. So okay. second week of the season, uh, okay. you know, first week of the season, it's 1,500. Uh, second week of the season, it's 1,520. So you, you slowly move up rating over time. And so if okay. you have a person who doesn't points. play, okay. they would get bypassed. Um, yeah. Now, it's just not probably significant enough that – you know, people are saying there's a lot of inactivity at the top of the ladder, uh, and and it could just be that the inflation isn't high enough to, uh, to surpass those people, and and we can adjust that, and we can adjust that for the next season. Cool. Um, but again, I think that is a system that we could make transparent to the players in some way, uh, more akin to the old uh, bonus pool that was in StarCraft II uh, back in the day. So that is something uh, we're talking about, but you know, no no idea when when we would get to that, but. Because the current system as it is, it works and it, it does what it is set out to do. We just uh, tune it up a bit. Okay. Um, 
And one more thing I wanted to ask you about, uh, you know, kind of the season length. Uh, we were like in Legion, we actually saw where Seven there was seasons. multiple seasons within a, a raid tier. And on, I, I, I feel have like that, that kind of worked ends. out great. I'm wondering we should have had um, two seasons why that so far. was changed because it seemed like it was, yeah, why? you know, it was nice. Like you, you'd have your season within a raid tier and then it would actually reset and you have an opportunity to kind of climb up uh, once again. And it felt like it really kept the, the ladder active. Absolutely. So two reasons, I think. One is okay. uh, One. something I alluded to before, the, the broader landscape of the game. Like we have this idea of Mythic Plus seasons. We have this idea of PvP seasons. It was just better for those okay. to be cohesive. Okay. Um, uh, arbitrary the, throttling uh, mechanism that nobody wants. That maybe we okay. Good. Were That's number about one. With the Legion seasons Good. was uh, gear and gear being. I, I don't know if you know this, but people tend to compare the gear from one source to another. What? And and so what was happening is you know it's important for like you know last season's gear to be important better than or excuse me this season's gear to be better than last season's gear and what we kept running into with Legion was the first you know, half of the raid tier, the first season, the gladiator, you know, highest end gladiator gear, it wasn't better than the raid gear. And then the second half of the season, it was better than the raid gear. And okay. so there was just this constant angst about like this, the comparing the PVP gear to the PVE gear, the <laughs> gear, the mythic plus gear. Um, and that was just, you know, a constant source of frustration for people. So that's so um, I think stupid. It, it, I don't foresee us going back to two seasons per raid tier That's... Uh, anytime soon. I think the game works better uh, when we just have you know these all these pieces of content lined up against each other. And um, I, I just think it would be you know, oh. like we said, we just don't want to have seasons that are this length. Just add a okay. stat so you don't Fair have enough. to balance it um, against raid gear. Uh, next kind of topic it's I wanted hard. to talk about was uh, why can't you do cool that? Down. So just like uh, why not? The, kind of the burstiness of the game. Um, yeah. In Shadowlands, I don't know. there is there's a lot of damage mod. There's a lot of cooldowns that classes yeah. have, and a lot of damage modifiers that classes have. And yeah. what ends up happening is players stack things together, and yeah. uh, yes. I think it causes uh, two problems. So because well, defensive cooldowns are also strong, so it causes two problems. On the lower end of Number things, one. a new player can just die in one second to True. you know a mage using combustion Sounds or a rep paladin and using wings um, or you know an elemental shaman lining up all his damage and you can just drop someone in just uh, a second a second and a half and then players have no idea what just happened to them because mm -hmm. the damage spikes so hard and then on the other side of things uh, when you have the best players playing against each other and most of your damage comes from these uh, offensive mm -hmm. moments like combustion you know doubling tripling your damage um if they're really good at using their defensive cooldowns, then they survive that moment, and you get into kind of like a stalemate where mm -hmm. you don't really have enough damage outside of your cooldowns to take someone down, and you're basically just waiting for that one-shot opportunity again. Yeah, that's what happened. So I wanted to kind of get your thoughts on you know the strength of cooldowns and stacking them together right now. Um, yeah, it's not great. I think what, what's challenging is the game's always been like buttons, that. Oftentimes. Those buttons are created and have to be like examined in a, a vacuum of like, does this button read as cool? Uh, yeah. You know, I press this. What amount of strength does it give me? Um, as much as possible, like we've tried to remove a lot of stacking cooldowns, but they still exist. I think when, you know, even when we created these uh, covenant abilities, uh, we may have created a few more of them. But uh, I think. It's an issue. Generally, I would prefer we could get into a world where, like, you know, every class only has one two to three minute cooldown uh, as yeah. an option, um, and there isn't a lot of stacking. I mean, for what it's worth, I don't think we're that far off from that right now. But there's also things like, you know, a trinket, or you know, um, conduit. You're uh, adding new bind, trinkets uh, though. Bonus or something like that. Uh, Aren't they adding a new maldict? Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, and, and I think the other problem is this is a problem. Why like adding said, a new if, one? If you're not, if we like tune the game around those one shots, then the rest of the time it feels like you're a wet noodle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and we don't want that either. So yeah, big. It is a problem. I think the the only the the right way to do it, and it, you know, being an unpruner, this doesn't make me happy. But is to just you know reduce the number of of those like cool down like buttons. I um, and that sort of thing. Uh, so the other kind of conversation we've, we've had is like, yeah, when I think about PvP talents that are like, you know, your damage is increased by 10% when Avenging Wrath is, you know, 
on inactive or on cooldown or whatever. Yeah. So pump up the damage of um, uh, outside of cooldowns. Uh, yeah, explicitly. yeah. So uh, I think those those are things we're doing um, right now. We're, we've added some PvP malts to a lot of the like tower spells to try to buff up the sustained damage. Um, but yeah, uh, ultimately though, people got to die, and um, uh, you know you have to make clips of you uh, one shotting somebody. Um, you have to, yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, and, and the game generally is feels more exciting when there are big hits. So that's why Shadowlands um, at the beginning just, was so you know, good. There's a spectrum of what's acceptable. Yeah, uh, yeah. Scale that's and, exactly and why it was so good. It. Cool. I, you know, I, I just wanted to quickly say one more thing. Um, mm -hmm. Something that I noticed in 9.1 is some abilities actually got buffed. So Frostbolt, for example, I'm really excited about this as a Frost Mage. Is um, I, I believe they turn tune down the PP talent Deep Shatter. So like. That got tuned down, so like your shadows are a little bit less, but they buffed Frostbolt just damage in PvP. So like your your filler spell Frostbolt is now going to actually feel like it's a bit more significant when you press it. Is there any thoughts to maybe doing this for um, a lot of you know the quote unquote filler spells um, yes. for classes? Hopefully, yeah. yeah. I would say yes. Uh, I, I'd say we we should look for more opportunities to do that. That's very good. Off doing it uh, too much, but um, filler that's spells suck. We're, we're opening the the gates on a bit. Uh, here yeah. in uh, nine one. So cool. There may be more of that coming. All right. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to complain about that. That sounds great. Um, can kind of double back to. Um, uh, let's see here. What's another topic that we got? Well, there are two topics I would really like to make sure, sure. we got to. Okay. Thank uh, God. One, All right, here we go. one is uh, you know nine one. Is it done? Um, All right. Uh, you know I think Minpoke. Minpoke. Uh, uh, I don't Min know. Minpoke. Min I have brutal. Did I make that I, horrible? Not um, too bad. Is, Don't worry. You're okay. uh, you know, he asked that question of like, should we expect more changes? I think I would say the state of this it is, you probably won't see n any more new um, nine like PvP talents coming to nine one, but you will see changes to the existing ones. Okay. So you know, as a result of our you know play test here in just a couple what days it come out? We'll be getting feedback. We'll all be playing with them. What day does um, it come I'm out? Sure, we'll learn a lot, and so. There will be changes um, to the classes still, uh, and, and PvP specific changes, but it's unlikely that you'll see like a whole new talent appear uh, okay. at this point. Um, the other uh, big issue is uh, mind control. Um, the mind control bug uh, issue. I, I just wanted to bring this up because I know it's a very hot button issue uh, in the community and this feeling like, why are we ignoring this problem? Um, we aren't ignoring the problem, I think is what I want to stress. Um, this is a very difficult uh, bug for us. Um, mind control uh, is, is kind of a complicated spell for the game. <clears throat> we have already committed a pretty significant amount of time, uh, very good programmers taking a look at it. We're gonna continue to spend time. There are people looking at it now. It is tricky. It is tricky because part of the problem is just reproducing it consistently internally uh, can be a challenge. Um, there is the bug is kind of caused by some combination of lag and timing mismatch between clients and servers. Yes, that's obviously um, what it is. And it's operating at the lowest level of like movement code for the game. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to just you know step out here and say like. We know this is a problem. Um, we're not happy about it. We're eight months, hard man. Um, thank you for for everybody's patience. It's um, been eight months. This bug, uh, and you know we're working really hard to repair it, but um, it has proven to be very difficult uh, to fix, Just... to reproduce, diagnose, all those things. So. Well I have to say, I uh, appreciate months, you saying months. that. We just got out in front of that one because that, that's one of the things I wanted to ask you. Is um, you know, we we got a few minutes left here, but in terms of like communication Six and months, you know, players giving feedback, is there is there a place that's best? Because you know, some people think like, oh, they only look at Twitter or they only look at you know the forums or yeah. you know they only look at or Reddit or whatever it may be. They it, only is, watch Ben Rookie stream. Yeah, exactly. They only listen to streamers. You know, but uh, I know that's not true. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, uh, yeah, I was wondering, is, is there a particular place that people you know you would suggest that they give feedback, or is it just kind of like a mix of everywhere? It is a bit of a mix of everywhere. Um, I, I I know that that may not be a satisfying answer, and and you know a lot there's there's a lot of players. And um, I think 
communicating with them is very important. And our, our community team uh, does a very good job uh, trying to reach out to all of them uh, and let them know that they're heard and feel engaged. Um, but really, you know, we pay attention to Warcraft devs, um, the Twitter handle. Oh, um, really? Check out the forums. Um, oh, really? You know, our, our quality assurance. Huh? Uh, people uh, are always looking at the forums, especially for bugs. Yeah, right. Bring those bugs. It, it, and we get those into a system. It isn't necessarily the case that, like, you know, the way the team works is like go to the forums looking for bugs. Okay, hey, that's what I'm going to work on today. You know, I'm going to fix this. But it's we, generally we know that. that, you know, someone finds those bugs, enters them into our bug tracking system, and then the developers are working off of that. So, okay. uh, and there are, there are, you know, are a lot of things. Uh, there's new work and new content for us to uh. create. There's old bugs for us to fix. Um, and, and we try to prioritize uh, as best we can. But uh, really, yeah, for the for folks out there who want to get their voice heard, uh, certainly um, sending messages to Warcraft devs, uh, posting in our forums um, is always very uh, valuable. And you know, and as far as uh, you know, the streamers are concerned, or the big YouTube personalities, you know, I think uh, you know, our everyone who works on this game are fans of the game, and they're fans of a lot of you, a lot of the content creators out there. And so, except you know, me. When, People make points that um, really everybody except with, me. Uh, the player base, uh, that sort of stuff gets forwarded to us a lot. So yeah, uh, we always uh, see um, things that are uh, really resonating with uh, you know players and, and your fans, um, and so we kind of keep abreast of those as well. So <clears throat> you know, I would say the only thing that doesn't work is yelling into a pillow. Like that just helps uh, I mean, <laughs> you. Uh, but I, I, I will never it, hear it. So, it helps me um, sometimes, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's the only type of feedback we never see. But um, all these different avenues to contact us, uh, they work. It's just, um, you know, th there's a lot of a lot of feedback coming in. It's hard to uh, make every single individual person feel heard. But uh, being on this stream right now is a part of that. It's just trying to let everybody know that we are listening and uh, we're working as hard as we can. Uh, mm -hmm. to make a great game for you. Uh, you know, I speak on behalf of everyone when I say, you know, thank you very much for coming on, uh, chatting with us. You know, we are at what that one hour mark. Um, I, I was wondering, can we do like a little, really quick, like one minute kind of lightning round for some topics that I had? Sure. All right, yeah, so yeah. super fast. Um, PVP trinkets and trinket balance, is this something that's being looked at at all? Um, you know, between badge, insignia, and emblem, I'd say emblem gets, is the one that gets picked the most by far, and it's you know the defensive option. Um, and it's the, yeah, we don't want the defensive option to be best. Um, so yes, we probably will look at that. Um, oh, we okay. think there's been talks about reducing it. Okay. Uh, another quick question I have for you guys: Is there any way we can get a list of like PvP specific changes? Because there's some sometimes a spell will get changed. Uh, example I gave you was um, at the start of Battle for Azeroth, the Ray of Frost and Glacial strike. Spike. Um, had some changes on it, and I think there's other abilities uh, like this where yeah. talents are tuned down in PvP, and there's no real way of seeing um, seeing that. Is there any way we could get like an like an official list? Yes, um, I could talk about getting that. I know that the PvP malts. I, I feel like we did the tech work to make them data mineable um, for the sites. I, I don't know that um, they take advantage of that. Uh, I'd have to verify that that that's true. I don't want to throw any of the data mining sites under the bus or anything. I, I, but I did try at one point, I remember trying to make the effort to make those uh, values um, open for them. Okay. Uh, I'm sure I'll get a, a tweet or two if I'm wrong and they're not available. Um, so that would be one thing. Uh, the other is, you know, a lot of the tooltips update in the game. Um, so hopefully you can see them there. Uh, but uh, I'm not, not intending to just put all the work on you guys. I think we could uh, work on some way to make this more obvious uh, for you, but I'm not quite sure. I'd have to work with our community team to find out what would work best. All right. Well, uh, like I said, we're we're at that one hour mark. Um, uh, so, uh, maybe we could do this again sometime. But I just want to say thank you very much for uh, yeah, um, you know, taking the time to talk interview. with us. True. We really appreciate it. Also, want to thank everyone that you True. know submitted questions for this because uh, I you know I got you know 500 questions or something like that to ask, and uh, this is kind of what it came down to. Um, I 
yeah, so thanks again. And I also just want to say, if you guys want to go check out some of the 9.1 PP talents, you know, this is your opportunity to give feedback on them. So you should hop on the public test realm um, as uh, we're going to be doing uh, a play with the developers. I know I'm going to be doing it. And you're going to be playing as well, right? I will be. I'll be there. What class are you playing? I have to ask. Uh, I'm going to be on Havoc, I think, today. Havoc Demon Hunter? All right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, uh, yeah. Thank you uh, very much. I appreciate right. it. And I'll see you uh, in the arena. All right. Thanks, Elliot. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Shout out to Vinruki. Shout out to Holinka for doing the interview. All right. So what are some of the main points? Let's go ahead and talk about some of the main points here. I, I think that the idea that I feel like a lot of times whenever they're talking about why they can't do something, it seems like they can't do it because of a problem that they invented. So like, for example, oh, well, we can't do, we can't apply this change right now because it's not a expansion or it's not a 0.1 patch or there's like raid gear that's different or something like that. The entire problem is that raid gear is being compared to PvP gear in general. And I think there should be overlap. You should be able to use raid gear in PvP and use PvP gear in raids. I, I agree with that. I know it's not a big popular opinion that a lot of other people share, but I actually think that you should be able to do that because I think that makes the game better. And it uh, gives people that are, uh, you know, it lets people go back and forth, right? Because like WoW is not, like what Holinka said, like WoW does not, PvP does not exist in, in like its own vacuum, right? PvP is a, it is part of a larger game. And because it's part of a larger game, I don't want to see the larger game just kind of be relegated to only PvP. So uh, PvP gear should, however, always be best in PvP, like 95%. Like, you should be able to get, like, one piece of gear in raiding that might give you a little small edge in PvP or something like that, and, like, vice versa, but that's about it. Like, I don't want to see, like, oh, the best PvP gear is better than, like, the best raid gear or vice versa. So, um, yeah, just, just like, 90 95%. And I think they've done that pretty well. You know, overall, I think they've done that pretty well. It's kind of like an example of this is the, uh, the, the leggings from, like, Mythic Stone Legion Generals. It has verse mastery, and it's 233. So it's like, and also the cloak, I think from them too, that's slightly better than like the PVP cloak, but who cares? Like somebody who raids gets that, they have this tiny like 1%, 2% advantage, who cares? So it's not that big of a deal and it makes people who raid feel like they have like that cool thing. So there's that, the RBG problem. Let's talk about the RBG problem too. I think the solution to PVP not being queuable for a lot of people is actually not solo queue. I don't think solo queue is a solution. I think solo queue is a symptom of the problem. The actual problem, the disease, is the fact that PVPers are not part of a shared space and they don't have reasons to interact with each other outside of their already preformed groups. I don't think solo queue is going to work in WoW. I think Blizzard should try it, but I don't think it's going to work. There are so many people that want it that I think Blizzard should take the chance and actually try it but I feel like it's going to be dog shit and people won't enjoy it. That's what I think. But I also think that they should try it for RBGs before they, like, ten, try it for, like, 10v10 RBGs before you try it for Arena and see what happens there. I also don't think that, uh, I think Holinka's idea that the uh, uh, battlegrounds are too big for them to be good for, like, 6v6 uh, RBG is also, is also true. Like, I, I think that, like, for example, like, doing Deepland Gorge in 6v6 would be completely unplayable and not fun. Like, I would just would not be fun. And I think it would be the same thing for, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, same thing for a lot of other BGs, too. Like, uh, Warsong Gulch is an exception, not the rule. Like, Arathi Basin would be like that and plenty of other ones, too. They'd have to make, like, smaller BGs, something like, uh, I, I think that, like, Battle for Gilneas would be a good, uh, 6v6 BG. And let me think, what are the other options? What else do you talk about? Oh, the arena gear. Uh, so the reason why that shouldn't matter is because you just make a PvP stat. Blizzard needs to do a PvP stat. If they don't do a PvP stat, they are going to be completely fucked over, and they're always going to be fucked over. It's always going to be dog shit if they don't have a PvP stat. That's what I think. They need resilience, they need like the PvP scaling. I would have preferred resilience, I'm gonna be honest. 
I would have vastly preferred resilience to what they're doing now. And the reason why I would have preferred resilience is because I would be able to uh, still have the... Uh, like, I don't like it whenever my stats change in the middle of combat. I think that's what it comes down to. Like, I think that's really gamey, and I think it's bad design. Straight up, I think it's bad gamey design. And a stat would be better. It's less jarring whenever you enter combat. It happened in WAD. It, it ha like you had like that freeze frame at the beginning, and it was just like it was just scuffed, man. It was just scuffed, and I don't think it should be like that. Spell penetration was good too. Like I mean, I'm fine, but like I don't think that they should change. Like I don't like the dynamic item level changing in PvP combat. I think it's dog shit. No future different rewards for two v two. I mean, I think it's kind of weird if they say that 2v2 is the most popular bracket, but they simultaneously don't have any plans and it hasn't been on their priority list to make content for the bracket. It just seems weird that you would have like your most popular bracket that you admit is your most popular bracket that you then don't have content for. That I think is dumb. I, I, I really do. I think that's really dumb. So they should definitely fix that and actually have like real, real content for 2v2. Uh, 2v2 is popular because that's where all the boosters are at. Yeah, they need to deal with the boosting thing. Because the problem is like the boosters end up gatekeeping the other players. And it makes it to where like you can't, you can't get past these points. And I think that they already changed that to an extent where you have to play a game a week. And so now you can't sit raiding quite as easily. So it's like you can still do it, but it's not as easy. You have to get a boost every week, and it just takes a lot more time and effort. And I feel like a lot of... It's like everything that they do like that is a small deterrent for boosting. But I don't think that they should make the game worse. The game worse in the pursuit of getting rid of boosting. If they're going to do that, they should just say boosting's against the rules and then suspend people that do it. Decent interview. Shout out to Holinka for doing it. Uh, I'm really glad that he did do the interview, even though uh, there were a lot of answers that I didn't necessarily agree with or like. I'm still very glad that he did the interview and he came out and he talked to us. So uh, that's definitely a positive and I'm happy about that. So yeah, that, that's pretty much it.